Blockchain is kind of like a dental record. Let's build one and let me show you. Oh, you want to try out that new milkshake place, Moo to you? What's Moo to you? It's Moo to you! I got really good milkshakes. Yeah, I, I got that without the shreds. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm helping Kramer out with his Bitcoin rig. What is the deal with Bitcoin? What's the deal with Bitcoin? It's money out of nothing. Money out of nothing. Out of nothing, Jerry! How do you make Bitcoin out of nothing? Hey, you see, Jerry, people pay each other with nothing. And when they pay each other, that transaction information gets put onto the blockchain, which is really just a record of who paid who with nothing. Now, as Bitcoin miners, Kramer and I, we go onto the blockchain and we hash it. And we're trying to find a value called a nonce. The nonce is nothing. No, 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 no. The nonce is actually something, Jerry. The nonce is the most important part. You see, the nonce is a number when combined with the hash from the blockchain gives you a certain number of zeros. When we get that information, we give ourselves Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is a currency about nothing. I've waited for this moment all my life, Jerry. Jerry, how's Picture Girl? Picture Girl? You didn't tell me about Picture Girl. Uh, I didn't tell you about her because I don't think it's going to last that long. Eh, she's always taking my picture and she makes me pose. Go here, do that, pose like this, smile more. I feel like I'm dating Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> well, maybe you'll get a little eyes wide shut. <laughs> or I could get the shine. <laughs> uh, what are you reading anyway? Oh, this? Mr. Peterson wants me to do a short essay on famous Serbian authors. You speak and read Serbian? Da, Kone. <laughs> so, do you want to go to Moo to You? Oh, I, I'd love to go to Moo to You. I hear it's amazing. Hey, you might want to hold up on that. I just looked him up on Yelp. Looks like they only take Bitcoin. What do I need Bitcoin for? I have fiat currency. <laughs> yeah, they don't take fiat currency. Only Bitcoin. <laughs> it's fiat. Currency. <laughs> She's reading a book in Serbian, George. I think I'm with her on this one. <laughs> so do you think you can give me some uh, Bitcoin to go to Moody U? Yeah, sure. Uh, about 10 bucks will do it. Uh, I thought Bitcoin was a currency about nothing. But you gotta pay money to get the nothing. <laughs> now I see why Kramer did this. Okay, the code for this example is available on my GitHub or my website down below. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe or leave a comment down below if you got a question. And feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. So blockchain, NFTs, and cryptocurrency are really big right now, but would you be able to talk about these subjects in an interview? So I actually built a simplified blockchain, NFT, and cryptocurrency miner in C Sharp. Now this video is so big, it's gonna be split up into three sections, a section on blockchain, a section on NFTs, and a section on cryptocurrency mining or proof of work. Now what I constructed isn't the actual blockchain or Bitcoin proof of work algorithm. In order to do that, we'd need transaction pools and wallets and encryption. But what I created is simplified so you can kind of understand what is going on. That way if you're ever asked to describe it in a job interview, you can do so. Okay, now everything starts with the blockchain. And while we're doing this, I want you to remember that the blockchain is really nothing more than a linked list where the previous node in the linked list helps calculate the next node in the linked list. Okay, so this is a blockchain. Now, the real Bitcoin blockchain is a little bit different, but this is a simplified example. So let's take a look at an actual block. Okay, so here's a simplified block. It's got a block hash, a previous hash, a nonce or number only used once, and some form of data. Now, when we're constructing the current block, we always know the hash of the previous block. That's gonna be vital to constructing the current block. The nonce is used as a small measure of randomness. Don't worry too much about the nonce right now. We're gonna to get to that in part three of the video when we deal with the advanced proof of work algorithm. But right now, the nonce is always gonna be zero. Now, here's what happens when data comes into the block. Okay, so we have our data. We take the previous hash, the data we just got, and the nonce, and we smoosh them all together in a hash. This results in a new hash, 
we take that new hash and we make it the block hash. Okay, now watch this. This is really cool. That block hash gets turned into the next block's previous hash. The new hash building on the old hash is the chain in the block chain. Now I've been saying the word hash a lot, so let me just talk about it so you can understand how important it is to the whole process. So a hash is nothing more than a mathematical function that generates a set of fixed text. And as long as this item that I'm inputting is the same, the hash will always be the same. But if I change one single thing, that hash is different. Hashes are also extremely hard or even impossible to reverse. Think of it this way. If I turn a potato into a hash brown, I can never again turn the hash brown back into the potato. This makes it really hard to tamper with a block because if you tamper with it, then the resulting hash will be different than the expected hash in the next block. Think of it like a dental x-ray. You can reconstruct the history of what your dentist did from previous work that was done on your dental records. If you tamper with the dental records, then the dental records won't match up with what's expected. So the blockchain is self-validating. Now that we have these concepts down, let's build one. Okay, I have my demo program here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a model class I'm going to call block. And this is going to be a super dumb class. The only thing this thing is going to do is hold the block information. So I'm going to start with some private fields here. I'm going to create a block hash, which is going to be a byte array. The previous block hash, again, a byte array. Your data, which is going to be a string, and the nonce, which is going to be an integer. Then I'll drop some properties in here, and it's only going to have the get method. And I'm going to do that because once we create the block, we should never be able to change that block again. How do we get the data into the block? Well, we're going to do that through a constructor. So we're going to send the block, the block hash, the previous block hash, the string data, and the nonce, which, since we're not really using it in this example, is going to be set to zero. Then we assign all the arguments that came in into the private fields, and we're actually done with our block class. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blockchain low-level class. This is the class that's actually going to interact with the blocks, and it'll essentially be a factory that just pumps out block after block after block. All of this is going to be controlled by a high-level class that we haven't written yet. Okay, so I'm going to start with making this static, because this is going to be a servile utility class. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a method, a static method, that's going to hash a block with the previous block hash, the string of block data, and the nonce, which, of course, will always be zero for now. And it's going to return the new hash. Now, what I'm about to do is going to make a lot of Seymours out there go, Damn, but you're converting the... I know what I'm about to do is stupid, but it's easier to understand as you're stepping through it. Okay, we're going to take the previous block hash, we're going to turn it into a string just for now. Let me just show you. We're going to take the knots, we're going to convert it into a string, and then we're going to smash everything together and we're going to put this into a string called complete block. Now that we have all the data in one place, it's time to hash it. We're going to do that by changing this string back into a byte array, and we'll use the SHA1 algorithm to hash. You can use any algorithm you want, MD5, whatever. Uh, Bitcoin actually uses SHA256. But the advantage of SHA1 is that it's really, really fast. Once it's in the new block hash, we're going to return the new block hash. Okay, so let's actually run this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the namespace here. Uh, that way the namespace in my program will match. And then we'll replace this hello blockchain with uh, essentially a previous block hash of zero, a transaction data called my transaction data, and a nonce of zero. Now let's put a Breakpoint on this and run it and see what happens. Okay, we just broke, so let's F11 into this and see what's going on. So we have the previous hash, and we're going to convert that into a string. We have the nonce, and that's going into a string. We have the complete block. Now, this whole thing here is the smushed together values of this, this, and the block data that came in. So we're going to send this to the SHA1 hash data, and we're going to come out with a new hash. Okay, so now we know creating the hash works. Now we can create the blockchain. But there is one special condition that we have to worry about first. The first block in a blockchain doesn't have any data about the previous block because there is no previous block. This is called the genesis block. And we have to account for this special condition. 
So let's go back to blockchain low level and we'll create a static method called create Genesis block. Okay, so step one, let's make the previous block hash and we're just gonna set it all to zero. And up here inside the class, let's just create a constant uh, for the Genesis block text. That way it's the same every single time we run this. The text can actually be whatever you want. If you actually look at the blockchain Genesis block, uh, the times chancellor on the brink of second bailout for banks is the Genesis block text. Okay, let's add some code to hash the block. We'll take the previous hash, the Genesis block text from up here, and the nonce, which is going to be zero, and we're going to send that into a block hash. Now we have all the information we need to assemble a block. We have the previous block hash, the text, the nonce, and the block hash. Now all we have to do is assemble the block using the block constructor and return it. Hey, we are almost done. Now we just got to create that high-level blockchain facade that'll talk with the low-level blockchain factory. Okay, let's create a new class. We're going to call this class uh, blockchain high-level. And this is actually going to hold our blockchain and perform operations on the lower-level stuff. Okay, to start, I am going to create a linked list of blocks that's going to be the private field that holds the blockchain. And I'm going to create a public uh, property that's going to return the value of that private field. Now we've got a place to keep the blockchain. Now for the high-level constructor, I'm going to drop in a constructor that will create a new instance of the blockchain. And then it's going to go down to the low-level blockchain and create the Genesis block. So as soon as you instantiate this thing, the first thing it does is it spins up a new blockchain and it creates the Genesis block as the first block. Now we need to add subsequent blocks. So let's create a method called add block. Now this block isn't going to return anything, but what it will do is pass in the string of the data you want to add. So this is essentially the text or the transactions of the block that you want to add. Now all we need to do is create a new block hash, add it to a new block, and move that block into the actual blockchain. So let's do that. So we'll create a new hash block from the last value of the blockchain. And since there's only one value, that's going to be the Genesis block. We're going to take the data we have to add and the nonce. That'll give us the new block hash. We take this new block hash and we create a new block out of the new block hash the blockchain's last value, which again is the Genesis block, and the data to add is text. We create the new block from that and add it to the last block in the chain. And we can just keep doing this and it'll always reference the previous block when we create the new block. Okay, let's go back to our program and paste in some code here. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our new blockchain and this will instantiate the blockchain and create the new chain. And then we're going to add two blocks to the blockchain. Ryan pays Posh Ryan 10 Bitcoin for lunch, and Seymour pays 20 Bitcoin to Moo to you for a milkshake. Now, granted, these aren't real prices. I'm just showing you this so you get an idea of what actual transactions might look like. Let's add in one more thing, and that's a loop that's going to go through the actual blockchain and read out our results. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay, let's hit run, and here's our data. Okay, so we start with three blocks here. Block zero, here's our Genesis block with our block hash. Uh, as you can see, 6AF0, 6AF0, the previous hash made it into the first block on the blockchain, uh, which holds the transaction data for Ryan Pays Posh Ryan 10 Bitcoin for lunch. Then that block hash becomes the previous hash for the next block, well, block height two, which is Seymour pays 20 Bitcoin and Moo to you for milkshake. And that's it. That's blockchain. Now, I'd like to talk about tampering next, but let's see what George and Kramer are up to. Boom. Yes. Arise. Arise, Arise my Bitcoin rig. Soon I will find the knots. And I will possess the knots. And I will make you mine. It is scorching in here. Let me turn on the air. Oh, George. Don't turn on the air conditioner. We'll blow the power. <laughs> We're gonna find that nonce, George. We're gonna find that nonce. But first, first, we need more power. I, I got a line on a Serbian that'll sell us a generator from a MiG-21. <laughs> Why don't you call him? Well, but I don't want to smoke him. I've already called him twice. <laughs> call the number, call the number and say exactly what it says 
on the sheet, exactly what it says on the paper. Morning. Hey, Nico, this is your cousin Roman. How would you like to go bowling? Three o'clock, 4th of May, parking garage, bottom floor, no weapons. Did he say no weapons? <laughs> oh, you've never seen me bowl. I don't know about you, but I could totally picture Kramer mining Bitcoin. All right, now how do you detect tampering inside the blockchain? Well, in order to detect tampering, you actually have to take the block that you think was tampered and the next block and evaluate those two. Okay, here's how this works. If we tamper with a block, the new block hash is going to have a new hash value that won't match the old hash value. Where is that old hash value stored? it's stored in the next block. So if those two values are different, this is what we call a clue. And as an added measure of safety, if you took the next block and you hashed it with the data from the tamper block, then the new block hash would be different from the block hash you were expecting. So in order to tamper with a blockchain, you would need to tamper with every single subsequent block in the chain. That's actually not that hard. Good blockchain implementations are distributed across multiple nodes. You would have to change 51% of all of the nodes in the blockchain to gain control of the blockchain. Now, Bitcoin has never been the subject of a successful 51% attack, but Ethereum Classic has been. And uh, if you've ever watched Silicon Valley Season 5, Episode 8, they cover a 51% attack in that show. Now, one more thing. If you have the nonce and you have the data and you have the previous hash, it makes it super easy and super fast to actually walk the whole chain and verify everything. Now, this speed of confirmation gets really important in my third video on how we calculate proof of work. So put a pin in that. It's going to be important a little bit later. My next video is going to be about NFTs. So after my closing Seinfeld skit, if you see it over here, it means I've finished it. Give it a watch. Now let's get back to Seinfeld. Hey, all the new to you. Hi, right, I'll uh, do one chocolate. What can I get you? Hi, right, one chocolate with whipped cream, please. No cash, only Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, oh, this is Bitcoin, only in paper form. You see, this is fiat currency that was issued by the full faith and credit of the United States government. So you can use this money to buy Bitcoin. No cash, only Bitcoin. <laughs> you see, I think between you, me, and Alexander Hamilton right here, you're gonna get me that milkshake. <laughs> I just don't know how to say no to this. I don't know how to say no to this. I threw away my shot. Well, you'll be back. Bum, <laughs> bum,